let the record serve. I'm not a real farmer, but I like to play one on TV. <laughs> because I am not a morning person, and it seems like all the farmers I know, they're up. First thing, before dawn, awake, tend into their farms and their animals, where me, I'm still in bed. Because I am not a morning person. And since I can't get myself up out of bed very early, morning chores, morning garden farm chores, are usually not happening. Today, that is an exception. She sure is pretty first thing in the morning. So, I reluctantly forced myself out of bed earlier than normal. Still out here a little bit later than I wanted, but before the sun has come over the garden, which is the important thing. I have to harvest my lettuce today. I've got beautiful lettuce scattered all throughout the garden, and I gotta harvest it because it's starting to turn bitter. So my lettuce is just on the verge of bolting, and when it does that, the taste of the leaves change. They get kind of bitter tasting. They don't really taste very good. They're not very desirable to eat at that point. You can eat them, but you're not really gonna want to. And lettuce is best picked before the sun touches the leaves. So my lettuces are in different stages. Some are further along than others. The ones that already have a really long stem, I think I'm just gonna keep those in the ground and let those flower because I really appreciate getting volunteer lettuce plants every season. Uh, as long as I let them reseed themselves, I really don't even have to plant lettuce. But, but then all of the others where they're still not quite uh, at the point where they're about their bull team. I'm gonna go ahead and pick those and I have an abundance of lettuce as you can see We have been eating lettuce. I eat a salad every single day. I cannot eat the lettuce fast enough To keep up with all the lettuce that I plant, but I love planting lettuce because it's a really easy crop. It grows fast It's actually a very beautiful plant. I enjoy lettuce but I am out here early to cut the lettuce, bag it up, and I'm gonna stick it on a cooler out on my porch today because um, I invited the local community to come and get some free lettuce if they want lettuce. <laughs> I put a thing out on Facebook just saying, hey, if anyone wants free organic lettuce, let me know because I have a lot. And I got a lot of interest in uh, people wanting to get lettuce, so gotta get all that done before I have to start my work day and before the sun comes up. See the sun is right there almost over the tree so I gotta work fast now. So when I'm harvesting lettuce like this I'm gonna go right down to the root base to cut the stem off and it stays in a nice bunch when you do that. My hope is that this lettuce will regrow. Sometimes lettuce will do that. After you cut it down one time, sometimes it will regrow a whole new stock. Considering where we're at in the season, it's hit or miss whether or not it's going to grow a new stock or not at this point. But we can always try. I'm 
sad to cut all of this. It's pretty. Though, it will not taste good. Much longer. Morning. <laughs> so I believe Anything going on? this is black seeded Simpson lettuce. Simpson? Yeah, black seeded Simpson. I believe that's what this one is called. It's either that or butter crunch, but I don't think it's the butter crunch. My memory serves. My basket overfloweth. So I thought this one would be interesting to show. So the head of lettuce was down here because this type of lettuce just makes a nice wide head. And it's sending up its center stalk, as you can see. It's also sending up a side one here, unless that's a different plant, but I think it's all part of the same one. And it's still edible at this point. <clears throat> Ooh, lots of bugs in it. Try and get those off. Well, I've lost my handle. This is a big basket. <laughs> and this is a lot of lettuce. So, I got all the lettuce. <laughs> it's a lot. I think this is enough for the first wave of community sharing. So I have these plastic produce bags that I'm gonna fill with the lettuce and then get it out on the cooler and hopefully the people will come. I mean, it's just beautiful. <laughs> There's so much, ah, it's falling out. So one of the local organizations I'm involved in and volunteer my time is the Ashtabula County Local Food Group team. Um, it's a group of people who are passionate about growing food and getting food out into the local community. I live in a farming region. We have a lot of farmers um, that produce large crops like corn and soy. And I've learned that a lot of those crops actually get sold and outsourced to places not in Ohio um, and in some cases not even in the United States. And I know there's a lot of reasons why local grown food doesn't stay local. Um, a lot of it has to do with money, people not being able to buy the crop 
so it gets sold to the highest bidder, you know. But we're trying to make an effort to get local grown food to more people locally. One of the really cool initiatives um, in a local town, it's about 15 minutes from where I live, is a food forest. It's called the Dorset Community Food Forest. And the people that are putting that together, um, I believe it's a six acre space. And they have planted over 300 different fruit trees, all kinds of different, um, you know, perennial berry bushes, perennial, <clears throat> perennial herbs, and the thought is, once the food forest is grown, because it's only, it's only in its second year, so everything's still pretty small. But once it's grown, I mean, and even now it's free, anyone can go to the food forest and pick and forage whatever they see there. It's on a public property. And it's for anyone. And so the idea is in time, this food forest will produce a lot of food that can feed a whole community. So part of the initiatives we're doing with our local food organization is getting more awareness that that even exists because a lot of people in our communities don't know that there is a literal food forest growing in our own county. And long-term goal would be to have a food forest in every single community. So that way the people that live in that specific community all work together to maintain the food forest and also reap the benefits of the food growing. Another initiative that is really cool is the Ashtabula County Local Food Guide. So, <clears throat> Any local farmer, gardener, beekeeper, flower farmer, someone who raises livestock, um, anyone who grows some kind of food product can be included in the local food guide. Um, it's in its, so they revise the guide every couple of years because people, you know, People come and go and, and things change, but overall there has been a really good response from individuals across the county who grow food in some capacity and want to be able to make it accessible to the local people. So if you get a local food guide, you get the names of the farm, what they sell, and the address, and what you can actually do is plot your entire shopping trip for local food. You can go to one farm that has beef, another farm that has honey, another farm that has produce, another farm that has eggs. Maybe one farm has all of those things. But the idea is sourcing your food locally and knowing, just knowing where you can go to get it. Because I think that's part of the biggest issue is that people just don't know where to go. The older I get, the more and more I see where it's difficult for people younger than I to contact someone they don't know. <laughs> um, if there's not an internet option to contact someone through like an email or a text, um, chances are they're not gonna make the effort to contact them. I'm generalizing. But I know I even struggle with making phone calls sometimes. I get all anxious and I was like, why? So having these farms accessible to where people can just open up a guidebook, it's also a PDF copy, um, and just see where are these farms, what do they produce, kind of get your questions answered ahead of time. When are they available? When can you go to them? A lot of them do have social media accounts so you can go and check out those. but. You know, it just it provides a window and insight into all the local food and how to shop local, stay local, all of that. You know, because we really want to see 
just this community um, resilience built where Ashtabula County can support itself. And that Ashtabula County doesn't have to rely on food that's being outsourced from across the world. It's a big goal. <laughs> it's a big challenge to face. There's a lot of low income situations where I live. And a lot of the people um, in those situations, they may have never really experienced eating a, a giant head of lettuce like this and enjoying it. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the low income, they can't afford this kind of food. And the food that they can't afford, well, usually isn't the healthiest. And because of that, uh, taste buds develop and prefer certain flavors. And it does take time to change the way your taste buds acclimate to nutritious food like this. I know even for myself for a long time, I was eating all the wrong things and eating a salad every day was not in my vernacular. Eating tomatoes and peppers fresh, I didn't do it. And it took many years um, and really why I kept gardening to change the way I ate. It wasn't overnight, but over time, it's gotten much easier to eat a healthy lifestyle, and I actually prefer it a lot more than what I was eating in the past. So through Asheville Local Food, we are just gonna keep uh, engaging with the community. We have different project initiatives that we're working to put together. Um, and I think just right now, at least in the early earlier stages of this team, is growing awareness that there even is local food that anyone has access to. Promoting all the different local farmer markets and just allowing people to build relationships with local growers. And so that's one reason why I am so happy and eager and blessed to be able to share my overabundance lettuce with my local community. Um, I mean, I could go to a farmer's market and sell this off. And I did think about it, honestly. But after thinking about the time to prepare for a farmer's market and do all of that, to me, it just feels much better to give it away. And if I can help bless some people in my area with fresh organic lettuce, then that's a good thing to me. And ideally we can build relationships to where they know that, hey, if they want some kind of produce in the future, they know where to come. Okay, I got 16 bags ready to go. So if you're interested in um, the Ashtabula local food movement, check out the website www.ashtabulalocalfood.org to learn more about that and also see the Ashtabula local food guide. Um, the group is also on Facebook at Ashtabula local food. And even if you're not from Ohio or Ashtabula County, Ohio, um, still check it out anyways, because you may get some ideas and inspiration for your own communities and how you can do something similar. So I just wanted to wrap up this video and give an update that the giveaway went really good. I was able to uh, give away at least half of all of the lettuce that I picked that day, and then the rest um, I gave to uh, the local coffee shop, all things coffee shop, and they gave away the rest for me. And so it was a good um, situation. It was a good turnout. I'm glad that I was able to bless people with uh, free organic lettuce. And so that was really good. So now we'll just see what I'm in overabundance of here in the next couple of weeks as produce is starting to uh, ripen and be ready for harvest and potentially maybe do some markets or something. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But thanks so much for watching this video. Love to hear how your gardens are doing this year. Please leave me a comment below 
And if in your local communities, um, if you do any type of local food initiatives, um, as I kind of explained how we have like our local food guide and local food groups that are supporting these sort of initiatives, I am very interested to hear if um, wherever you live, if there is similar initiatives and just kind of grow awareness around this space of getting local grown food out to the local communities. If you'd like to connect and follow with me more, I am on social media on Facebook and Instagram, YouTube, of course, at Bloom and Wilt Gardens, as well as TikTok at Lex in the Garden. And I share all kinds of growing tips, gardening tips, home gardener, back, backyard gardener, chicken related tips and content. So um, check me out on those and I hope to see you out in the social universe. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and do something you love today. Bye.